Welcome to the exciting world of making things. Today you'll be introduced to tools used in industry to make products you use every day. You'll make a catapult from scratch, cutting, bending, and punching metal to make the parts and then assembling them. This may be the first time you've used some of these tools. Don't worry, you'll get plenty of help and it's lots of fun. To help you build your catapult, this movie will provide a visual overview of how to make parts and assemble them. Once you get an idea of how the construction flows from this movie, you'll be able to use the instruction guide to find detailed measurements, equipment operation instructions, and assembly tips. Remember that safety is your number one priority. Just like in the real world, you must always wear your safety glasses and use gloves on certain parts of the project. Always follow the instructions for operating the sharp tools and electrical equipment. Tie back your hair, take off your jewelry, and remove loose clothing. If you have any questions about safety, please ask the Tech Explorer trainer. Remember, safety, safety, safety. Work with your team and help others learn how to operate the equipment. Construction goes faster when you work together. Have fun building the project and be sure to check out interesting technical careers. If you like this project, you could be designing, engineering, and fabricating products for your career. There are lots of exciting, highly paid job opportunities. There are many starting points for this project. This movie starts with fabrication of the catapult arm, but there are several different starting points for this project. You can't all start at the same station. No matter where you start, you'll use all the equipment. Now let's get started. To make the arm, start with a piece of flat aluminum stock and mark 8 inches from one end. Put the mark close to the edge of the vise. Wearing gloves, use the hacksaw to smoothly saw off the arm. Mark drill holes and lines following the instructions. Then file off the rough edges. Rotate the arbor press bottom plate to the largest groove. Center and lay a rod over the three-quarter mark. Push the ram down to bend the arm. Next, very carefully drill three holes in the arm using the drill press. Keep the drill press area free of any loose objects, such as clothes and hair. Put the arm in the vise, check the drill position, and then drill down and through the metal. Hold the hand drill perpendicular to the arm and drill the counter sinkhole. Hold the tap straight and slowly turn it all the way through to form the grooves for the screw. Place the washer in the top of the hydraulic press and turn the lever right to lock the hydraulic press. Pump the arm until it stops. Unlock the lever by moving it to the left. Press down on the cylinder holding the cup and remove it. To attach the cup to the arm, use one drop of thread lock on the screw. Push the screw through the cup and arm. Use the screwdriver to tighten it down. Next, you'll make the axle that the catapult arm rotates on. One end of the axle rod is pre-cut. Mark the other end. Insert the rod in the center of the three jaws on the lathe with the uncut end showing. You should be able to see the mark you made. Tighten it with the chuck key. Turn on the lathe and rotate the dial to half speed. Use the large knob facing you to slowly advance the cutting bit. Keep moving smoothly back to the line. When complete, turn the large knob to retract the bit. Turn off the lathe and use the chuck key to remove the rod. Check that the bearing fits. Center the axle in the vise on the milling machine and tighten. Turn on the mill and set it at one-third speed. Use the knob to slowly and steadily move the axle forward until the slot is cut through the rod. Then reverse back across the rod, turn off the mill, and remove the rod. The axle will attach to the arm at the hole located at five and a half inches. 
Place it in the arbor press. Rotate the bottom plate to a flat area. Press the axle down into the arm. Next, move to the drill press. Clamp the arm and axle down with the hole under the drill point. Remember to be very careful with the drill press. Turn on the drill and rotate the knob to bring the drill down through the hole and the axle. Use a screw, a star washer, and a nut to secure the axle to the arm. Tighten with a screwdriver. The next step is to make the sides that support the catapult arm. When it is finished, it will look like this. Form the sides of the catapult with two pieces of sheet metal. Measure, mark, and draw the cut line. Place the metal in the shear with the mark showing on the right side. Pull down the handle to shear off the excess metal. Use the template to mark the holes on the first piece. Then turn over the template to mark the second piece so you have two reverse sides. Then use a hammer and punch to lightly make a dent at the center of each hole. Pull the arm down on the mounted punch to make the large hole in each of the sides to support the axle rod. Use the manual punch to make small holes in the sides. To make the foot that supports the sides, start by drawing the bend line. Then insert the plates into the back of the brake by lifting the arm and slipping the large holes over the pins. Check that the sides are perpendicular to the back of the brake. Rotate the lever to clamp them down. Lift the handles at the front of the brake and rotate them up until it stops. Release the clamp and lift the sides off the pins. Check that the sides can stand up. Use the arbor press to insert a graphite bearing into each of the large holes in the sides. Rotate the bottom plate to an open groove. The wide end of the bearing needs to be on top. Remember the footing for the side is facing down. Gently push the bearing through the metal. The spring wire provides the energy to launch the ball with the catapult. It requires two bends in different directions. Insert the wire in between the two rods on the bending jig with the other end pointing up. Bend it all the way around to form a U-shape. Insert the other end between the rods. With the U-shape facing up, bend the other end around the rod. The second bend is in a hook shape. To make the trigger, measure and mark the strapping material. Cut a six inch piece with tin snips. Remove the sharp edges with a file. Use the smaller hand punch to make a small hole near the end. Use the larger hand punch to make the large center hole. Slide the trigger end with the small hole into the bending jig. Hold up the sample for reference. Bend the metal around the small cylinder to get a 90 degree angle. Insert the other end of the trigger, check the sample and bend it 90 degrees. The final bend is around the large cylinder to shape it into a half circle. To protect your fingers, add shrink wrap to the trigger. Cut off about one and a half inches of shrink tubing and wiggle it onto the trigger. Use the heat gun to shrink the material starting inside the trigger and moving out to the edge. Push the nylon screw into the hole in the middle and fasten the nut. The bottom edge releases the catapult so the flat edge should face down. To file the sharp edges on the base, move the rasp away from you. Mark a line where the side will be attached. Mark the holes on the base. Use a hammer and punch to make a dent in the center of the holes. With a screwdriver, attach the side with a self-tapping wood screw. Do not over-tighten it. Insert the arm assembly and other side. Hold the second side where the arm can swing freely. Mark and punch the base and then use wood screws to attach the second side. Hold the trigger up to the arm and make sure the arm hooks on the trigger. Mark the wood screw holes for the trigger and use the screwdriver to attach it. 
Add the trigger wire by hooking it on the arm near the cup. Slide the other end in between the two sides from the edge of the board toward the center. It should extend into the board past the sides. Use a washer with the self-tapping wood screw to attach the wire to the board. The wire goes under the washer. Insert the foam in between the sides. Start at the board edge and push it toward the middle. When you use bolt cutters to trim off the nail tip, be sure to wear safety glasses. Open the bolt cutters all the way and put the nail into the back of the jaws. For safety, point the nail down and away from people as you cut off the tip. You can file any rough edges. Then press the nail through a small hole in the side into the sponge and out the hole on the other side. To complete the project, test your catapult with a ball. Once you've completed this project, you will know how to use many tools. A mill, a lathe, drills, presses, and a shear. You've also learned tapping, using a hacksaw, and countersinking. These are marketable skills that you could use on the job. These skills could lead you to a highly paid career designing, maintaining, and repairing automated equipment. The practical fabrication experience will be useful if you want to become a technician, product designer, or engineer.